and happy core to you, continuing our religious education. We thank the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God. He is the Son of God, God the Son. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending. We welcome you into our midst for this core message. And, the, and today, I want to go back and, and pick up a familiar passage of Scripture dealing with who Jesus really is. Now, too many of us see him as Mary's little baby and uh, we, we see him as a prophet, we see him as a priest, we see him as a teacher, but uh, Jesus exposes the, the secrecy of who he is. And, 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 and so as we begin to look at Matthew chapter 16, it's interesting, Jesus comes into Caesarea Philippi, a very uh, strategic place. Why? Because at Caesarea Philippi are statues of other gods. And Jesus waits to bring his disciples into the regions of Caesarea Philippi. And let that be, metaphorically, some insights. Sometimes God's leading in our lives is to get us to a certain place in order to disclose something of himself that we did not know. Like he is the Alpha and the Omega. He started, he's going to finish. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord that will provide. He's Jehovah M. Kadesh. He's Jehovah Sinkanu. He's, 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 he's El Elyon, the Most High God. He's El Shaddai, the big breasted one we can lean on. So Jesus takes us through, as he did Abraham and Moses and, and others, he takes us through different facets of life in order to expose himself, meaning God is not self-revealed. He chooses to reveal himself to us. And here in, in Matthew chapter uh, 16, Jesus comes into the region of Caesarea Philippi, uh, verse 13, and he asks his disciples saying, listen to this, who do men say that I am, my God? They are in the midst of all of these statutes of unknown gods. Jesus seizes an opportunity to reveal truth. Who do men, and he does it with a question. Many times we learn emphatically from questions. The interrogatives, who, what, where, why, and when. He says, who do men say that I am? And his disciples say, some say, amen, that you are one of the prophets, Elijah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel or John the Baptist. And, 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 and then he says, uh, um, uh, who do you say? He uses specificity. Who do you say that I am? Now notice the backdrop. He's revealing truth. He's revealing revelation. Who do men, more than likely, the men of society, the men of the world, who do they say that I am? So they answer him. And then specificity, who do you say that I am? That is major. If we're going to follow Jesus, we got to know who he is. We got to be certain and factual in our hearts of who he is. He's not just a prophet, a teacher. He's not just a good man. He's God in the flesh. He is part of the triunity of the tri of the tr of the trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When he was born and took on flesh in Bethlehem of Ephrata by and and when when Mary had him, the Holy Spirit protected his perfections from Mary's sinful flesh. He's God who has come for unto us, Isaiah says, 9, 6, unto us, listen, a child is born. That's his 100% humanity. And unto us, a son, 100% divinity, is given. So he is the hypostatic union of God and man. 
God is spirit, John 4, 24, and they that worship God must worship in spirit and truth. Spirit is not corporal. Spirit is invisible. But Jesus is the only person of the Godhead who took on flesh. God the Father is spirit. God the Holy Spirit is spirit. But Jesus took on flesh. For unto us a child is born, son is given. He has the dual nature of 100% humanity, 100% divinity. So they 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 said, he said, who do you say that I am? And then he moved from the revelation to the revealer. And Peter says, thou art the Christ, Christos, Messiah, the son of the living God. And he said to Peter, Peter, listen to this, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Now, let me stop Paul's and Park because flesh and blood does not give us uh, internal revelations. God opens up our eyes, ears, hearts, metaphorically. God opens up our understanding. God opens up our knowledge. God opens up, amen, an avenue whereby we can understand theological truth. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then Jesus goes on to say, Peter, he said, thou shalt be called Peter, a small stone, for upon me, this rock, I will build my church, ecclesia, called out ones, saved by calling, and the gates, authorities of hell shall not be able to, re to reveal against it. Now listen to this. And Peter, I'm going to give you the keys. Now, Peter's name is first, whenever there's a list of disciples, I'm going to give you the keys of heaven. The keys is the gospel. So whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven in the Greek. I'm giving you keys. Keys to get into heaven is the gospel. Believing that Jesus died for your sins was buried and rose again the third day. He's God's only begotten son. Amen. He's all God, all man. He's man's God and God's man. He came to die for our sins to save us. And if we believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, we are saved. If we ask him to come into our lives and save us. Now, now notice this. Peter, thou shalt be called Peter. He was Simon, which means weak. Thou shalt be called Peter, the strengthened small pebble that's part of the massive rock, me, Jesus. And he says, I'm giving you keys to the kingdom of heaven. We have those keys. The ministry of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation so that we too can use truth to draw men to God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keys. He deals with the revelation and all the revelations that I have received over the years. And, and the word is the last revelation in the book of the revelation. There's difference between revelation and illumination. There's no more revelations. God has done all He's completed all the revelations, but God gives us illumination. He turns the light bulb on so we understand the revelation. Now listen to pastor. A revelation of God, of ourself, of others come from God. God gives us insights. And he is the revealer. And the revelation is God's truth so that we can be transformed and have triumph in our lives. But then there's a restriction here. And, and, and this is very puzzling. Look what he says. Verse 20. Then charged he the disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Wow. Don't tell anybody who I am. It's a secret. Don't reveal to anybody who I really am. I didn't come to be worshiped. I came to die. I didn't come to be exalted. I came to die. I didn't come to become king. I came to die. I didn't come on a white horse. I came on a donkey. I was born in a makeshift delivery room in a stable. 
in the midst of urine and manure. While cows and sheep stared at me, I burst into time. There was no room in the inn. I didn't come with all this fanfare. I came humbly in order to be the savior of the world. And look at the restriction. Don't tell any man these things. Now, after he died, they were free to tell. He is the Christ, son of the living God. The more that has been revealed to you through truth, through transparency, through the triumph of the word, the more you know about Jesus, the freer you are. The closer you are to Jesus, the freer you are. The more you accept Jesus, the freer you are. That's why it says in Matthew 11, come unto me, Jesus is saying, all ye that labor and are heavy laden with sins, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, learn of me. He tells us to learn of him. We need to learn more about the Savior. He is our rock. He's our refuge. He's our redeemer. He's our friend. He's our faith. He's our facilitator. He's our provider. He's our peace. He's our power. How much have you been revealed about Jesus? The revelation, the revealer, and the restriction. Now, we're not told in this dispensation not to tell people who he is. Rather, we are told to tell everybody who he is. Tell the world who he is. He's Jesus Christ, the righteous one, son of the living God and God the son who has promised us, listen, keys. Keys unlock locks. Lord, unlock the lock to my liberty. Unlock the lock, amen, to my love. Unlock the lock, oh God, to the ministry that you have given me. I want to tell the world and I want to reveal to the world who Jesus really is. And the more you understand who he is, the more you understand who you are. Do you really know him or do you just know of him? God bless you. Have a great day. Jesus loves you and I do too.